Hi, Uchi Ji here with another art challenge. This time we'll be using mixed media and my art supply selection is scrapbook paper, washi paper, washi tape, ballpoint pens, sharpies, highlighters, Copic markers, fluent leaky markers, Prismacolor colored pencils, and watercolors. It's a bit different, but hopefully it will be another fun addition to my journey in art. So let's get started. Of course, I don't plan on using all mediums, so I'm going to select three randomly for this piece. I'm hoping to at least get markers or the colored pencils since that's what I'm most comfortable with using, but we'll have to see what destiny brings us from this amazing Honolulu cookie box. Definitely one of my favorite cookies to eat. So let's see what we get. Here's the first one. Second, and third. For this piece, we will be using fluently markers, scrapbook paper, and the last choice is washi tape. Okay, not as bad as I was expecting. With my luck, I thought I would get all paper, but I got some form of marker, so yay! Anyway, for this challenge, I will be doing this fan art of Dai from Dai no Dai Boken, or Dai's Great Adventure. I am in love with this anime. It's a pretty old series, so when they revamped it, I was super excited to watch it, and you can watch it too on Crunchyroll. But I digress, and let's get back to the artwork. I've been doing a lot of my sketches digitally since it's easier to fix, and adjust the sizing for my traditional art. Plus, if I mess up, I can always go back and retrace it with a light box. Here, I'm working on Gomei-chan, and wow, that was fast. To be honest, I went with a fairly simple drawing this time and decided to make it in layers to give it more of a scrapbook effect. This really helped in the end, and you'll see why in just a bit. For Gomei-chan, I really wanted to make him primarily paper since it's a simple shape and I don't have to worry too much about shading. I decided to save the outlining portion for last, so it definitely looks kind of weird at first, definitely looks weird, but I think I can make it a little bit better as we go. For the washi tape portion, I decided the clothing and hair would be this, and I would cut the excess with the X-Acto knife, and why did I decide to do this? At least I knew I would be cutting out dye, so I could have cut his hair and scissors, but I braved through with the X-Acto knife that was actually broken at the tip anyways. Keep in mind, this is my first time using washi tape in this manner, so I wasted a lot of it. Plus, it took a long time to cut out everything with a knife. I made a ton of miscuts on the paper, and all around this was the most stressful part for me. Watching all of those relaxing videos of art with washi tape was definitely misleading. After that's done, it's time to color in his face and arms. At least for this part, it's something I'm comfortable with, though again, I didn't have an outline to begin with, so it felt a little bit weird coloring everything in. Luckily, I have a large selection of markers, so I should be able to color everything nicely, right? Wrong. And you'll see why in just a bit. I started by coloring in the eyes, which didn't turn out too bad, minus the part that I didn't include the highlights. But I kind of like the gradation from orange and brown. After the eyes, I went in and colored the mouth, and for once, included teeth. I don't usually include teeth when I draw characters, but I thought it would be fun to include it as a small detail for dye. When this part is done, I went onto the arms to practice coloring in the skin before adding coloring to his face. I'm always hesitant to color the face because I tend to mess up the shadows, and initially the arm coloring was going okay with just the base layer. I started with a light orange and then a light pink for the shading. At this point, it was okay, but once I started adding in the darker colors, everything went horribly wrong. I think a major re reason was that I don't have too many in-between colors from the lights and darks, and I did my best to fix it, but in the end, it really just didn't work out. I know a lot of YouTubers would probably cut this part out, but we all make mistakes and the process of fixing it is just as important. So after a little practice off screen, I went and colored his face the correct way with the lighter colors from Fluently. 
I have all these colors, but to be honest, most of them don't work well for skin. Back to the fixing part, I redrew his outline and arms again. I was pretty much planning to do his arms on a separate layer, so it worked out. And this time, I did a much better coloring version of his arms. After that, it's time to start cutting everything so we can get an idea of how it will look together. I ended up cutting out his whole body and hair, so I think it was a waste of washi tape, but it looks kind of cute so far. By this point, I didn't use scrapbook paper for anything outside of Gomechan, so for the background, I thought this mappy paper mixed in with blue would be kind of cool. I teared it by hand in hopes to give it more of a scrapbook paper feeling. After a bit of adjusting, I taped it to the base paper, and with this, all the basics are done. Now, it's time to start adding in the small details and putting everything together. There isn't too much to say about Gomechan, but I did add in some shading for the mouth and eyes, and of course, eventually went on to the outline. At this point, I was really struggling with the outline, so I was a bit worried with how everything else would turn out once I started outlining the rest of the piece. Before outlining dye, I taped everything to the same layer, so we can kind of get an idea of how everything will look minus the outline. In case you're wondering, I used Tombow's amazing Mono Permanent Adhesive to keep things together, and because it's easier and less messy than using glue. Once everything is set, I start outlining the rest of the piece, which was pretty much challenging with the fine liner I was using. The face of dye was fine because it's basically all on the paper, but the outlines for the outer portion were difficult. Looking back, I probably should have pre-outlined everything first to get a cleaner and thicker line around him. I also added in a few white highlights for the eyes, which made me realize I can't cut circles well. But here's the final piece. For my first mixed media piece, it's not too bad, but there is so much I would want to change in addition to the outline portion. The major thing is probably the hair since I ended up making it flat. I was planning to shade with the markers, but it wasn't noticeable at all. I also think I need to get better at cutting with an exacto knife since a lot of the cuts didn't come out smoothly and I overcut through the paper. At least for the materials I randomly selected and used, it wasn't so bad for a first piece, and it was fun to experiment with the different mediums together. I'm hoping to continue this mixed media fan art as a series, so if you have any ideas for additional mediums to add, please leave a comment below. What would you like to see next? If you'd like to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button. I have some pretty interesting things lined up for the next month. Thank you for watching and see you next time.